Thank you, Vicky, for inviting me to France. It really is an honor for me to speak in front of such a vibrant forum about timely issues and challenges that affect our industry. Before I go on, I want to acknowledge today, ladies and gentlemen, we meet at a very important moment in time. Very important. Because it's the beginning of the Indian Premier League season, of course. And I know there's some big questions out there playing on the minds of many, like can the Chennai Super Kings successfully defend their title? Well, I grew up uh, in the United States where we uh, uh, did baseball, where we um, threw the pitch as opposed to uh, bowling it. We hit home runs instead of sixes, but you know, rather than discuss the finer points of these two great sports, the former diplomat in me knows better than to talk cricket with this crowd. But I will say this, the IPL is the most exciting and most attended cricket league in the world, and that's why Star is banking on this passion and has paid substantially for the broadcasting rights for the next five years. Now that's the kind of smart media business that all of us can understand, and it's what I've come to talk to you about today. Because if there's one thing that unites Indians as passionately and across as many religions and socioeconomic strata, as cricket, it's the movies. Movies and all of their diversity of cultures and language, the pure richness of spectacle, whether they're on jungle screens or on market sized mobiles. And in recent years, it has been so exciting to see Indian filmmakers no longer creating stories for just local audiences, but sharing dramas with universal themes for global audiences and markets around the world. More and more people are learning about India primarily from seeing its films and television, which, by the way, supports tourism and generates job growth. You only have to look at the successes of Dunga and Sacred Games to see the global impact of what we do, and just as importantly, what we do together. Dunga brought UTV motion pictures and Walt Disney Pictures India together, and Sacred Games, Netflix's first Indian language movie, brought our newest member studio, Netflix, together with Phantom Films. On a personal note, this is my third trip to India over the last couple years, and in my previous capacity as the United States Assistant Secretary of State for Economic and Business Affairs, I saw this beautiful country from many perspectives, from the economic to the political, and from business to the cultural. And I also saw the vibrancy of the Indian film and television business. The film industry, which makes between 1,500 and 2,000 films a year, contributed $33.3 billion to the Indian economy and supported 2.36 million jobs in 2017. It is also the largest television market in the world, with more than $10 billion in revenue in fiscal 2018. And when I visited, I knew that Bollywood was, and still remains, the world's largest producer of films, contributing more than 40% of India's box office revenue. So I needed to see it for myself. When I was here, I visited a Bollywood film set, which turned out to be, of course, the most memorable part of my visit. Watching the day-to-day -day production activity was extraordinary. You couldn't take your eyes away from the spectacle, the sheer enormity of the scenes, and I saw a marvel of creativity. So India, I'm one of your film and TV industry's biggest fans, and I'm proud to return to this extraordinary country as the chairman and CEO of the Motion Picture Association to represent the interests our member studios, many of whom are here today, they are so deeply invested in India. Disney, Fox's, Star TV India, Sony, Viacom, and Netflix, which is our newest member, has made a very strong commitment to this market. Because of our presence and our deep investment in India's future, we want to be your partners in many mutually beneficial ways. So we share a deep interest in incentivizing the 
Indian media and entertainment business to grow even bigger here. As we meet, for example, Indians live in a country that's the world's largest producer of movies, but it has the least number of screens available to enjoy them. A report that we're releasing with Producers Guild of India here at Frames underscores the challenge with a telling example. Danga is the highest grossing <coughs> film in Indian history. And as Prime Minister Modi has reported, China's President Xi even made a point of telling him how much he enjoyed it. India's population is, of course, second only to that of China. And yet this movie made more in China box office, China's box office, than it did in its own country. As much as five times more. The numbers, ladies and gentlemen, tell a story. China has 50,000 screens compared to India's total, which is now down to 9,500. Clearly, as our report concludes, building more screens would bring much more revenue to India. And that'd be a game changer for the national box office and the entire entertainment industry. But unfortunately, there are at least as many state laws governing the construction of new theaters as there are states. Some laws even date back to the British Empire days, a time when they were opposed to restrict the gathering of large crowds. Incentivizing our industry is so much more effective than hampering it, which is why we're urging the states to reduce those barriers by shortening the time it takes to get approval to build those things. And on the production side, we're pleased that the government is thinking about the federal tax incentive for filming that our studios will be very much behind. We've also urged state governments to step up their incentives, not only to local films, but also encourage foreign investors. We're happy that the Film Facilitation Office India, created in part at our industry's request, regularly engages the states to open doors and create more opportunities. We have to build upon and support Prime Minister Modi's historic one nation, one tax idea, so that creators are not so overcome with additional local taxes that they change their minds on starting productions. We've encouraged state governments not to levy additional taxes to discourage filmmakers, and we've asked three states that have introduced local body entertainment taxes to roll them back. And of course, there's so much more that we can do together, not only to protect our creativity, but actually incentivize the market and build on the kind of growth that India enjoys today in its OTT streaming, direct-to-consumer industry. Thanks to the affordability of mobile phones in recent years, young people and old, rich and poor, from remote villages to bustling towns, 95% of this nation are watching movies, television shows, and of course cricket, in the palms of their hands. And around the world, people spend an average of six hours and 45 minutes a week on the internet. In India, it's eight hours and 28 minutes. And according to a recent study by the Boston Consulting Group, the OTT streaming market here in India is going to reach $5 billion by the year 2023. We know that together we can build an even bigger entertainment market, a market that gener can generate millions, even billions of rupees of revenue to the exchequer, a market that can create jobs and opportunities across the entire economy. And as we produce and produce in this equation, filmmakers and other creators are often beset by cumbersome regulations that slow down the, shoot, the shooting permit process, or by state taxes that threaten to engulf their production budgets. And in our conversation with the federal and the state governments, we've advocated a basic formula, simplify, incentivize, promote, and measure return on investments on any incentive program that takes the need for. For example, the NBA shared an economic contribution report last year that underscored the importance of the movie entertainment sector to the Indian economy. And we're happy that the Indian government identified the Indian media and entertainment industry as one of the 12 designated champion sectors to help raise its export services to more than 4% of GDP in 2022. 
many other countries, we've seen the positive impact of rewarding creativity instead of harnessing it as a mission. And wherever we're perfectly we're trying to show the economic rewards and return on investment of these and similar issues. And on that point, creativity, I want to talk for a few minutes about piracy and copyright protection. Creativity is a different heartbeat of our industries. Piracy cuts into that piracy. It robs income from creators and craftsmen. Our creative output starts to drop off, and little by little, the entire ecosystem breaks. Our economies lose, and a rising number of consumers here across the world are deprived of great stories. Now, when, when I came here at, at with uh, former Secretary of State John Kerry as his top economic and business advocate, one of the issues before the Indian Parliament was camcorder legislation. And I was among those who strongly advocated for legislation to address in theater camcorder piracy. And I'm pleased to see that. The Cinematograph Act Amendment is now inching closer to the finish line. And not only that, it contains many of the provisions that are actually proposed. This is an important step, but it's essential to address online piracy problems in a comprehensive manner. In Maharashtra, for example, the very heart of Bollywood, we're fighting to reduce piracy in a very direct way. The Maharashtra Cyber Digital Crime Unit, or the MCCU is a great example of multiple stakeholders partnering on a successful endeavor to honor and protect the sanctity of Indian creativity. Our studios support the MCCU, while the Motion Picture Association has helped to coordinate their efforts with law enforcement. To date, law enforcement has taken down 235 illegal pirate websites. And this effort has been such a success they were working with the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade to promote the model to other states here in India. It's our hope that this example can be adopted across India and even internationally with cooperation from similar agencies. It is as important to protect India's incredible creative assets as it is to introduce the incentives that will not only produce more sinister but to build greater infrastructure across all platforms it makes India this ever more robust media and entertainment market that we all want to see. That is an outcome and a future that I anticipate with great excitement and one that I look forward to working with you to realize in the years ahead. The great cricket journalist Peter Roebuck once told a story about India's passion for cricket but I think it actually has a message in there for all of us too. He said this, a train that was going from Shimla to Delhi stopped at a station for a few minutes longer than usual. And the reason it stopped was simple. At that moment in time, Sachin Tendulkar was batting 98 runs. And everybody on that train and on the platform, from the passengers to the conductor, they waited to watch him complete his century. And I think both our industries always feel a little bit like that. We are batting 98. We are powerful. We are strong. We are achieving. But we're always looking to get to that century. Like the crowd that waited so patiently and confidently for such a score is done, we know it's going to happen. Together here in India, I know that we can get there. We have the shared interests. We have the desire, we have the partnership, we have the capacity, and ladies and gentlemen, we certainly have the creativity. Thank you very much.